morning and welcome to St. Patrick's. We have the following announcements this morning. Lexio Divina for today and the daily reflections for the week and children's and regular bulletins are at the entrance of the church. All are also available online at the parish website. Thank you for all who have been able to make a gift to Partners in Charity. With only this week and next week left, please prayerfully consider making a donation to close the gap of the final $3,000 to meet our parish goal if you haven't already given. Please sign up to serve in visitation or hospitality ministry at the doors of the church so that these important ministries may resume as soon as possible. Finally, we'll hold our second Light of the World retreat September 30th through October 3rd. 31 parishioners joined us for the first retreat, and we've already received sign-ups for this upcoming retreat. Please sign up at the doors of the church or on the parish website. You can see the bulletin for more details. Let us begin our prayer this morning by singing hymn number 303, Gather Us In, 303. Good morning, everyone. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Amen. My brothers and sisters, as we gather together this morning, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. Lord Jesus, your mighty God and Prince of Peace, Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, your Son of God and Son of Mary, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, your Word made flesh and splendor of the Father, Lord have, mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. O God, who caused the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose, grant your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise, that amid the uncertainties of this world, our hearts may be fixed on that place where true gladness is found. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, I know their works and, and their thoughts, and I come to gather nations of every language. They shall come and see my glory. I will set a sign among them. From them I will send fugitives to the nations, to Tashish, Put, Lud, Mosok, Tubal, and Javan, to the distant coastlands, that have never heard of my fame or seen my glory, and they shall proclaim my glory among the nations. They shall bring all brothers and sisters from all nations as an offering to the Lord, on horses and in chariots, in carts, upon mules and dromedaries, to Jerusalem, my holy mountain, says the Lord, just as the Israelites bring their offering to the house of the Lord in clean vessels. Some of these I will take as priests and Levites, says the Lord, the word of the Lord. A reader, reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, you have forgotten the exhortation addressed to you as children. My son, do not disdain the discipline of the Lord, or lose heart when reproved by him. For whom the Lord loves, he disciplines. He scourges every son he acknowledges. Endure your trials as discipline. God treats you as sons. For what son is there whom his father does not discipline? At the time, all discipline seems a cause not for joy, but for pain. Yet later it brings the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who are trained by it. So strengthen your drooping hands and your weak knees. Make straight paths for your feet, that what is lame may not be disjointed, but healed. The word of the Lord.
be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus passed through towns and villages, teaching as he went and making his way to Jerusalem. Someone asked him, Lord, will only a few people be saved? He answered them, Strive to enter through the narrow gate. For many, I tell you, will attempt to enter, but will not be strong enough. After the master of the house has arisen and locked the door, then you will stand outside knocking and saying, Lord, open the door for us. He will say to you in reply, I do not know where you are from. And you will say, We ate and drank in your company, and you taught in our streets. Then he will say to you, Do not know where you are from. Depart from me, all you evildoers. And there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. When you see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, and you yourselves cast out, and people will come from the east and the west, and from the north and the south, and will recline at the table in the kingdom of God. For behold... Some are last who will be first, and some are first who will be last. The Gospel of the Lord. I'm fairly certain none of us really want to hear those words that we just heard in the gospel. Jesus, as he tells this kind of mini parable in this moment, says, you know, the master's going to arise and just simply say, well, I don't know where you're from. I don't know who you are. And mind you, he's doing this in the midst of a moment where, again, they're talking about who will be saved, and this is in the context of the chosen people of Israel, This is where we get there coming from the north, the south, the east, and the west. It's not going to be limited to just them. So lest we think special status gives us some kind of avenue where we can just creep by and just say, hey, I'm all good, we might want to recalibrate that opinion rapidly. I go back to something that a hard football coach that I had back in high school would always say to us. He'd get get very, uh, shall we say, animated and yelling at all of us and saying, don't go half speed. This was usually in practice, because we'd be tired, we'd had a long week, we didn't want to kind of try anymore, and he would come back and say, don't go half speed. When you don't go full speed, that's when you get hurt. And it was, there's a lot of truth to that, because if you weren't playing at the maximum of your capacity, you left yourself open and vulnerable that somebody who was playing at full speed was going to knock you, knock your head off, so to speak, and you were going to be in a pretty lousy place. Same thing goes for our Christian life. The worst thing we can do is go half speed walking through these doors. What do I mean by that? Well, you come in, you sit down, you pray a little bit, and you're saying, hey, I've checked the box. I'm here. Well, friends, I'm glad you're here. It is wonderful to have you here. It is a true joy and a privilege to have you here. But with all due respect, it ain't enough. God wants your heart. He died so that he can have your heart and be in relationship with you. He goes to the cross so that there is a chance to enter in to an eternal gift of love with you for all eternity. So if we're going through the motions, if we're playing at half speed, we're putting ourselves in terrible, terrible danger, friends. We're not meant to live out of that place. We're meant to live out of a place where God can reach in and grow in relationship with each of us. Because at the end of the day, that's what we're going to be judged on. Is that love of God that we have in our heart that we continue to open up day in and day out. Not just on Sundays and not just again for an hour each week. 
I'm glad you're here, but the Christian life is a thing of totality. Further, friends, we cannot play Catholicism in a a la carte fashion. What do I mean by that? It means we cannot take, uh, go through the cafeteria of Catholicism and say, I like this teaching over here, I like this one over here, but those over there, oh, I don't like those at all. That's not how this works. And the reason it doesn't work like that is because you're not accepting an ideology, you're accepting a person, namely a divine person in the person of Jesus Christ himself who entered into time and space and is holding all of this together in himself. That would be the equivalent of you going to someone you love and saying, you know, I like all these things over here, but I like none of that over there. You're accepting the whole person, my friends, and sometimes we're, accept we're, we're taking that whole person and like we, you know, it's like, okay, this ain't perfect. With Christ, it actually is, though. Where's the imperfection lie? Right here. Because our hearts are in, in uh, disunity with his sacred heart. He has made us for himself, as St. Augustine said, and our hearts are restless until they rest in the, him. The problem is, is we've convinced ourselves that our Lord has to conform to our will, bend the knee to us. And that's not, again, going to fill us up. Because he's the author of salvation. He's the one looking at each and every one of us and saying, this is the way. This is the way home. This is what I've made you for. And this is going to be the path where you're going to have to traverse. And there are going to be times where we're going to be looking at a very tough path. Why? Because he himself traversed it. He took the road to Calvary. He walked through terribleness. He went through unimaginable suffering that we can barely comprehend on our worst day. Unless we think again, well, he's a divine person. He had all the advantages. That divinity that he held in himself meant that he had to stay open to that fullness of pain. Where you and I can shut down and sometimes shield ourselves off from it, he couldn't. He had to take the maximum amount of desolation, of that emotional pain, of that spiritual pain, of knowing the fact that his saving act wouldn't get everybody home. Not because he didn't do his job, but because we refuse to do ours. That's why he's sweating blood in the Garden of Gethsemane. Because he starts to see the totality of everything that's going to happen, and he understands there are people who are going to still walk. My friends, as we join together this morning, my question is, is who do we want to be? Jesus Christ looks at each and every one of us in a very personal, unique way and calls us to himself. But all he can do is propose that gift to us. It's up to us to respond, either with the fullness of everything, turning our hearts more closely over to him, or we look at him and say, I want to go another way. And he'll respect it. He'll give you your freedom. But we only have so long on this earth, dear friends. There's only so long before we have to again meet our maker. And in that moment, when we see him face to face, we will be judged perfectly. Now what do I mean by perfectly? God sees what's going on in here. So when we talk about judgment and an unjust judgment that we see among us being uh, fellow, fellow brothers and sisters, the reason it's unjust is we can't see the totality. God can. Particularly Jesus Christ, the second person of the Holy Trinity, God made man, can see the heart. And what's more is when we stand before the living God, we're going to know that it's a perfect judgment in our hearts. We're going to know that it's like, yes. This is it. This is correct. This is what I deserve. Good or bad. This is not meant to scare you, but it is meant to be a little bit of a wake-up call. Because we all too easily go through the motions, and the culture is helping nothing. 
because we are now in a place, and I say this, I feel like a, like a broken record saying this, but I think it bears repeating week in and week out. The culture is going on a shift out to sea, so to speak. There is a rip current that's pulling everything away from God. And if we are not doing our best to get out of that rip current and make our way towards the shore that is our Lord and Savior, I assure you, you're going to be taken out to sea with it, and you're going to end up falling into some really tough areas. The beautiful part is God's always there to bring you back, but do you really want to go through all those trials that are unnecessary if we can stay right in that pocket where he wants us to be? He loves us with a love beyond all telling. He loves us so much that when we make mistakes, he's ready to forgive through the sacraments. He loves us so much that in a few moments' time, he's going to open up the fullness of divine love so that you and I can take it into our souls standing right here before this altar. He loves us so much that he provides for us at every point of our life through the sacraments, through the gift of prayer to open up those other parts of our hearts that are still stuck back here in reserve to ourselves. Or even worse, that the enemy has his hooks into. And he's willing to walk with us in all of it to bring us into that light that only he can provide. But he can only do that with our yes. If we feel like we're spinning our wheels, if we feel like we need another step to take, well, friends, we're trying to provide that for you. There will be in a few weeks a little in-house retreat. If you feel you're stuck in, stuck in the mud, call Light of the World, which is a time to enter into this more fully, to take another journey. Even get to go home at the end of the night and sleep in your own bed if you go on this little retreat. There's opportunities to grow in holiness. I myself will try to teach a little bit this fall to open up some of those areas of prayer, of what this theology means of growing in this love of God that's at the heart of our faith. But again, like Christ himself, all we can do is propose, not impose. So I place it before you this day, my friend. You have a choice, like we all do, to make our yes or to go another way. But my hope and prayer is that the, you respond to the Lord and Savior who has come to give us life, and as Scripture says, to give it abundantly so. Because if you do, you will start to find that joy, that peace, that strength that can only come from the God who loves us. Let us stand now and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things are made, for us men and for our salvation, and down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, 
the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Placing our hearts and minds before the Lord, let us offer our prayers before him this day. For those who struggle with failure in their lives, that they may realize that Christ is with them in their journey every day. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the people from the east and the west and from the north and the south may be welcomed with hospitality in new places and new lands. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those whom poverty is a daily struggle, including the homeless that those with greater abundance can reach out and assist them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those returning to school this fall, school children, teachers, and staff, that they may embark on a new school year renewed in appreciation of curiosity and the joy of learning. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our mission parish in Haiti, especially at this time of increased tensions, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all first responders, military, frontline medical workers, and support staff, that they all be kept safe, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those friends and loved ones whom have gone before us into the embrace of the Lord's arms and whom we will remember in this liturgy, and especially for Lauren Riley and Kathy Riley, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those killed or injured in the war between Russia and the Ukraine, that they may soon come to a peaceful end to this conflict. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the intentions of our parish prayer chain, and for all those prayers you hold deeply in your own hearts that are known to God alone. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father in heaven, open our hearts to your graces that we may continue to grow in love of you and of our neighbor. Lord, strengthen us along the path you have traced for us and help us to respond generously, even when the journey is difficult and hard, knowing that you will always walk with us in those moments to strengthen us every step of the way. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. As our gifts are brought to the altar, let us join together in singing hymn number 437, O oh God, you search me. 437.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O Lord, who gained for yourself a people by adoption, through the one sacrifice offered once for all, bestow graciously on us, we pray, the gifts of peace and unity in your church. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death. And by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the host and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. <laughs> the mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you 
Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Robert our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and to all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them in to the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will. Live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
now for the prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Complete within us, O Lord, we pray, the healing work of your mercy, and graciously perfect and sustain us, so that in all things we may please you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Have a great week, everyone. As we go forth together, let us sing hymn number 721, Hallelujah, Sing to Jesus, 721. <laughs>